I believe everyone. Failure, failure, failure. And who loves failure here? I believe no one, right? Everyone wants to be successful, but no one wants to be a failure. So, I never thought that I would fail, but over the last few years of my life and my career, I have realized that success and failure are not two independent things. These two things are completely different. Success and failure are not two independent things. These two things exist together. And the definition of success and failure is completely different. Success and failure are not two independent things. These two things exist together. And the definition of success and failure is completely different. Success and failure are not two independent things. These two things exist together. And the definition of success and failure is completely different. Success and failure are not two independent things. These two things exist together. And the definition of success and failure is completely different. Success and failure are not two independent things. These two things exist together. And the definition of success and failure is completely different. Success and failure are not two independent things. These two things exist together. And the definition of success and failure is completely different. Success and failure are not two independent things. These two things exist together. And the definition of success and failure is completely different. Success and failure are not two independent things. These two things exist together. And the definition of success and failure is completely different. Success and failure are not two independent things. These two things exist together. And the definition of success At the end, I would like to introduce a concept which I follow in my life. So when I was a young boy, uh, by the way, I'm still young, I'm in still my 20s. So when I was a child, uh, I was very studious. I was always first in class. Till 10th, I was continuous first in class. And somehow in my childhood, that was a definition that I created in my mind to be successful. But then in, when in 11th and 12th, I came second in class, I was very shocked. and my confidence was low that how can it be done right but i realized that what is a failure for me was a success for a person who was last in class but still i i considered myself as a failure and i continued my journey so i joined this college in 2010 and i come from a very normal uh, middle class family and i was very scared in the starting So in the starting, uh, you know, my my other colleagues and other students used to tell their accomplishments, their stories of their achievements and their extracurriculars. Whereas I belong to a very normal school and I never had participation any extracurriculars or any extra, you know, uh, extra work out of the normal college or school curriculum. And I was very scared how I would perform, uh, how would I survive in this hostel or in this college. But then I remembered something that my grandfather used to say. so my grandfather was a role model for me and he was a very hard working person he worked actively till 75 years of age he handled all the business along with my father so he told me that you have you have to have a goal in your life if you have a goal then you have to make efforts around that goal and if you make efforts just wait for the outcome whatever the outcome would be you have to have accept it and if you don't accept it think what went wrong and what you need to do Uh, to achieve that goal or to be successful and don't go by others or what others say right koi kuch bhi kehta rahe aapko apna dekhna hai ki kya karna hai kaise successful hona hai so with that thought in mind i continued my journey in this college i literally used to you know uh, shake uh, uh, among people on the stage i remember in in the first semester i was called one of my uh, by one of my faculty ki yaar ye na ye aapko padhna hai sirf aisa bhi nahi ki khud bolna hai i i was literally shaking so to overcome that challenge what i did that i i will do give presentations and my first presentation of my life was in iit roorkee in second year so that was the moment where i realized that yes i can do it and three years passed by everything was great i i scored good i did well in college but then came the moment in 2013 after three years of my college when i realized that now is the right time or now is the time to decide what to do next in future and i had no idea i was blank I loved computer science. I loved logic, programming, etc. But I had no idea what to do with it. So I have I had a group with my two friends, Ankur and Vishal, and uh, we started learning Android. We got to know that Android development is something that we can learn in the industry. But I was again not very confident that is this the right path. So like other students, I chose to do MBA. I paid my fees for CAT, etc., and I started that path as well. But I continued in the Android as well. So we built some apps. uh we even won competitions in colleges and with that journey with that knowledge i got an internship offer from one of the companies in noida that was a complete turn around for my life because there i learned that this startup culture is something that i can pursue and before that uh, i was i had dreamt of you know being in a big mnc but never thought that startup could be a way so over there i see i saw that a guy who is 4 year older to me is running a company of 25 people he's paying their salaries and he's paying to me as well and i coming from a uh, from a family background of business i thought that i can do it as well and i will do it so from then i made up my mind that i will work in startups i will not join any big mnc i'll work in startups and i will open on my own some day so from then i started my journey and i started my career i started my hard work just to learn as much as possible 
Luckily, I got the project for making Dynout's first Android application. I did that. Uh, it was a two months project, and it was very hectic. I literally had to work on Sundays as well. And I literally worked on the floor on Kashmiri Gate metro station because the place where I was staying, uh, it was June and July, and it was very hot summers. And on top floor, there was no electricity. So I used to go at Kashmir Gate metro station. I used to code sitting on the floor. It was interesting, but it was you know uh, depressing as well at the same time. Because guard used to come and say, sir, you can't sit here, go somewhere else. So that's how I, I completed that project. And that's where I realized that I have achieved an interim goal uh, for, for a big goal. And then there I realized that there's a gap between the college curriculum and the industrial experience that we need. So back to college, I decided to open up a group. I opened up MAD group, which was Mobile Application Developers Group. And I made a team of 10 people. I even got a college uh, office set up in the college. And we started building Android apps, and I started training others, my peers, my juniors. So they, that was my kind of first entrepreneurial journey within the college. And we built multiple apps. And with that knowledge, I again opted for my next career stint. Within the college itself, I uh, joined the same company as a full time within the last semester of my college. So I worked as an Android and backend developer. I learned a lot. Uh, the job was great. The work was great. I was learning. But then I got another offer. It was another company from Gurgaon. It was Grey Orange Robotics. It was a, uh, a hardware company, robotics company. We used to build robots for uh, warehouses, flip car, delivery, etc. And they offered me to join them. But I was very scared because I, I was kind of an introvert back then, uh, or, or tending to be because I was purely focused on the work. So then I thought, if I will not get out of my comfort zone, I was staying with my college friends, I was staying in a PG. So if I will not get out of my comfort zone, how would I run a company? So I left my, that comfort zone and I went to Gurgaon, a completely new city, and I started working over there. That was a completely new experience for me. I literally, so I, the first project that I got was for Mahindra Tractors. I went to Hyderabad for about 10 days. And I used to quote, sitting on a tractor, wearing a helmet, industrial helmet, and cranes are passing by, and I was quoting in that situation. So at one point in time in Noida, when I had a cushy job, working on, uh, you know, uh, in ACs and on beanbags, and here I'm working on a tractor sitting on a tractor, right? So I realized that, I'm, am I doing the right thing? But then I continued because I remembered uh, what my grandfather used to say that uh, patience and confidence is the key to success. So I continued my journey and I met Dhananjay over there. So Dhananjay uh, and I were roommates. We used to hang out together. And he also had the same passion to start a company uh, someday. So after working over there for about eight or nine months, we started Park Wheels. So Park Wheels was uh, an initiative to revolutionize the parking industry in India. And back in 2015, pre-demonetization era, it was all manual. Nothing was digital, nothing was automated, in fact. So we started building products, we started figuring out problems. We even got three more colleagues to join us. And then we, uh, we figured out the problem statements, and we figured out a product. We built it, we installed it, while we, I was on notice period. But, uh, and we thought it is a success. But after six months, we realized that it's a failure. And we had failed. And we got demotivated, but again, because we had a goal, we, I, I had a goal, we continued. We again pivoted, we created a second product, and all our savings went in into that product. That was a costly product. For next six months, we again thought that now we'll be successful. But again, after six months, or over a year, we were again failed. We had run out of our money, we had no other options. All the three other colleagues left us because we were not able to you know, build a product or build anything for this industry. That was a pretty depressing moment. But despite all the setbacks, you always have to get out, you always have to achieve, you have, always have to chase your goal. If you don't do that, you would be a failure, right? So I achieved that. So what I did was, again, I continued. And we built third product. I myself used to go on ground, working with guards. I used to be a ticket operator in the morning and evening, and I used to code the rest of the time just to understand how the industry works. And that product was a successful. For next one year, we raised our angel investment. We raised 75 lakhs, that kind of money I have never seen in my life. And that was the moment. We started getting our own salary after two years. That was the moment that now we are successful. But then, at the end of 2017, again came the moment that now we were not getting any clients. We had run out of money again. And now we had even employees whom we have to pay. And that's a moral duty as well. So we were chasing a client from two years. 
and where that patient's key is, is important. We were chasing a client for two years, and in 2018, early 2018, we got that client. We got five big projects, the kind of money that was more than 75 lakhs, and we were about to execute those projects. But with that came another challenge. Even to execute one project, the kind of money we needed was 10 times more what we had in bank. And we were like, what do we do? Everything we got, everything we thought, everything we got, client we got, we don't have money. So we had to take a risk. We took a debt, huge debt, at high interest rate, and executed that project. Uh, was successful in building the complete product for, for that big client. It took us two months and was successful. At that moment, we thought that now yeah, we are on the right path. We will be successful. Whatever we are doing, this will go on. Then something happened uh, in 2018. My grandfather passed away. And he was uh, a role model to me, as I said. So when I told him uh, before 2018, or in between 2018, that we are going to be featured on CNBC. So with those recognitions, we were covered by NASCOM. We were in top 10 NASCOM members 50. We were covered by CNBC. <laughs> Only two companies to be covered by CNBC. And when I told him that I'm going to be on air on TV, he was very happy. Because when I left in 2010, he was kind of unhappy because uh, he wanted me to continue his business. But then he thought that this, that was the right decision. But when it aired on TV, before that, he passed away. But then, even yeah, without, without, with personal setbacks, you can't stop. You have to move on, and that comes as a more responsibility. Now you have to look after your family. So we continued. We continued to grow more. We grew our team. We got more proje projects. We got more funding. We got one CR funding after that incident. And that was the road to success. And we were very happy. Me and Dhananjay were very happy that this is what we thought, and this is what is going to be. But then again, uh, I, I, I remember I went to my hometown in December 2019. I spent my new year with my family after a long time. We had plans to move to Gurgaon and stay together. I planned to give all the comfort and luxuries which my parents had sacrificed. But in January 2020, I got a call at 4 a.m. in the morning from my mother that my father had passed away. And that was a completely shattering moment for me. Whatever I th had thought that I had achieved, I thought that this is not, maybe, maybe not the right way. I just believe between November 2019, we filled out forms for Forbes, 30 under 30. And after two days, my father passed away. I got to know that I'm going to be featured on Forbes magazine, 30 under 30. But he was not there to, to, to even see that. So those incidences changed a lot in my life, how I see life personally and the way we, we function. And with that thought, uh, I, I realized that success and failures cannot, cannot uh, you know, sustain independently. And the definition of success is very much different what others have. Today, in this era of digital super connected world, what I've seen is people tend to create their definition of success by seeing others what they post on social media. But believe me, that's not the truth. The definition of success is what you make out of it. You have to think what you need, what you can do, and if you opt for that path, probably if I've opted for MBA, I wouldn't have achieved those things which I have done. So you have to think what you can do, right? So you do not need a big VC funding to be successful. You do not need to read 400 books a year to be successful. You do not need to get up at 4 a.m. in the morning to be successful. What you need is the right set of skills, right set of decisions, right set of path, and right set of environment, right set of colleagues, and all other things, right? You have to identify yourself. So Parkville's story or my story was not around, you know, glamorous headlines in newspapers or TV or raising millions of funds or raising making crows or V's. It was around two guys from a very normal college, leaving their comfort zone, achieving something, you know, building products that people love and taking a less traveled road. Thank you all.